that. So let's see. Uh, first, for medicine, we want to go up to 700, a little bit more. And then in history, um, we want to go to uh, 512, so that's 500 just above that. And then remember, those technology books were just behind that. And then fiction, um, that frequency was 273, so in between 200 and 300. And then finally, with uh, education, 190, so just short of the 200 mark. So if we want to, we could go ahead and, and fill those in and give them color identifiers. And we could also, probably a good idea, is to um, put a, 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 um, a title at the top. So we'll call this the uh, uh, New Import Titles. I'll put book titles. Because we want to be able to um, have a, a representative idea. You know, if someone else looks at this graph, they want to know what it is. All right. So, uh, you know, there's the Excel method, and uh, there's the, also the, the, you know, the handwritten method, which is probably what you'd use for your homework. Now, let's take a look at the other type of graphical descriptive measure. Uh, that would be with pie charts. Now, a pie chart is suited to show how a whole quantity is divided into different parts. So um, think of, uh, uh, we want our pie chart to start with a, a, a totality of units that are under consideration. You know, remember how we talked about the population? So um, and what the pie charts do is show how that single group is all divvy up. And those, those, div those divisions are called the sectors. And so those are the slices of the, the pie chart, so to speak. Uh, the measure, and then we measure the central angle to get the, the width, so to speak, of these sectors. And so notice how we do that. We take the frequency of a category and then divide that by the sum of the frequencies. So we get uh, what's called the relative frequency, a percentage, so to speak. And then we simply multiply that by 360 degrees. So in slide number 12, we've got some of the properties of pie charts. So like I said first, the pie chart shows the parts of the whole for each qualitative data item. And the size of each sector in the pie chart corresponds to the frequency of the category. And each sector is labeled and includes either its frequency or its percentage. And finally, the circles are arranged with the largest frequency in the upper right portion of the circle and then clockwise in descending order. So when we draw these, uh, when we look at these pie charts, the largest group is always going to be in the upper right corner and then they get smaller as we go clockwise around the pie chart. All right, so in, in slide number 13, let's go ahead and take a look at an example of one of these pie charts now. It says the number of hours per person, per year, that Americans watched uh, various forms of television in 2000 is shown on the chart. So this is the way that, that people watch TV. Notice here um, uh, the number of hours per person, mostly basic cable TV. A lot of people watch cable. And then right after that, uh, uh, broadcast TV. You know, ABC, CBS, NBC. And then independent stations. Independent uh, uh, stations like um, uh, like Fox and that kind of thing, and then premium cable like HBO and that kind of thing is in the uh, the last category. So here's our graph. Let's take a look at the questions now. Uh, and then that's, and that's in slide number fourteen. First question: What form of television was least watched in terms of hours per person per year? Well, let's see. Let's answer that before we go any further. Well, it looks like, if we look at the graph, it ends up being this premium cable, right? 
All right, so let's go ahead and write the answer to that down before we go any further. So for uh, example two, part A, um, premium cable was watched the least. All right, so there's your premium cable. Now, now let's go ahead and, and take a look at, at part B here in the question. It says, what percentage of television viewing was basic cable? In other words, we know that basic cables was the most popular way to watch TV in 2000. What percentage of all these hours watched were from basic cable? That's what we want to compute here. So think of how we want to do that. It's, it's kind of like one of those um, uh, probability problems from the previous chapter. We want to take the number of hours corresponding to basic cable and then divide that by the sum of all the other hours we have. So let's go ahead and, and, and think about that now. So let me write down what we want to do. So we want to put down the hours of basic cable. divided by the total hours. So let's see, for the data we have here, then that would be equal to, let's see, the numerator is 655, and then in the denominator we want to add everything up. 655, that's the largest class, plus 640 for network and broadcast TV, 168 for independent stations, and then finally 108 for the premium cable. So if we compute that, we get 655 divided by uh, 1,571. So if, if we uh, divide that, we end up getting 0 0.417. So let's interpret the solution here. So this means that about 41.7% of TV viewing time was attributed uh, to basic cable. So I think that's what's important when you're doing these kind of problems here, is to not necessarily be able to draw these graphs, even though it's nice, but we have we have machines to do this kind of thing for us. Like I said, I use Microsoft Excel to get these. Uh, but we want to be able to interpret these the output of these graphs. That's what's important. That's the major thing for us. All right, finally, uh, for homework, we want to look at uh, problems 1 through 45 odd in this section.